The movie centers on a man named Samson, a former Special Forces operative who turns vigilante, driven by a personal vendetta against a child trafficking ring. One evening, he enters a notorious nightclub, posing as a buyer in order to infiltrate and dismantle the network. His target that night is a young boy named Victor, whom he pretends to negotiate for, offering a large sum of money. As the cartel leader listens with interest, Samson suddenly attacks, taking down each trafficker with precision. His elite training shows in his swift, brutal maneuvers, such as a roundhouse kick that disarms an attacker, followed by a sharp elbow strike to disable another. After subduing the traffickers, Samson finds Victor in a back room, promising the boy he's there to bring him safely home. They make their way to the basement, where Samson has a motorbike ready for their escape. As they speed away, he triggers remote explosives he had planted earlier, which detonate moments after they leave, engulfing the nightclub in flames and taking down everyone inside. However, in his haste, Samson failed to account for the other children still trapped in the building, and they too perish in the explosion. The next morning, Samson receives a call from the police, requesting his presence at the scene. There, Inspector Steve, Arn, a lead investigator, confronts him, condemning his reckless actions. Steve reveals that several captive children died due to the fire and carbon monoxide poisoning, a consequence of Samson's impulsive plan to destroy the trafficking ring. Though Samson's intention was to save Victor, his methods resulted in unintended casualties. Inspector Steve, aware of Samson's past as a Special Forces operative, now working off the grid, warns him to stop interfering with police operations. Six months later, Samson has completely changed his life. He now works as a butcher, leading a quiet, repetitive life far removed from his past of high-stakes missions. Every day he rises before dawn, selecting fresh cuts at the market, preparing meat meticulously for his customers. Yet despite his new routine, he is haunted by memories of the tragic night and the children who perished. Meanwhile, an American family arrives in the town of Malova for a vacation. The family includes Faye, his wife Monica, and their teenage daughter Becky, who is excited to explore. Faye, a professional MMA fighter, plans to participate in a local competition. Unbeknownst to them, as Faye takes a photo of Becky at the airport, a woman named Amelia snaps pictures of her from afar, her intentions unclear. The family arrives at their hotel and Becky asks her dad, Faden, if she can step out onto the balcony to get a better signal on her phone. Faden, engrossed in watching MMA fights on TV, barely notices her request and agrees. While Becky stands on the balcony, she spots Amelia on a nearby balcony. Amelia casually suggests that the signal might be better in the lobby, making her advice sound friendly and helpful. A short time later, Faden calls out to Becky but gets no response. Checking the balcony, he finds it empty with only Becky's laptop left on the table. Growing anxious, he tries calling her phone, but there's no answer. When Monica, who had been in the bathroom, emerges, she has no idea where Becky went either. Faden's worry quickly turns into panic as he searches the hotel for his daughter, but finds no trace of her. He informs the hotel manager, and together they review CCTV footage, but no useful clues are found. Desperate, Faden reaches out to the media, and soon the news of Becky's disappearance spreads widely, drawing attention due to Faden's fame as an MMA fighter. The Moldovan police initiate a large-scale search for Becky. Meanwhile, Samson, now working at his butcher shop, sees the news of Becky's disappearance. Shortly after, Faden and Monica arrive at his shop, desperate for help. They explain that someone from the American embassy suggested they seek Samson's assistance. Samson insists he's just an ordinary person now and tries to refuse. However, Monica, with her police background, notices a unique tattoo on Samson's neck, an emblem of a special police division. Realizing he has a significant background, she presses further, urging him to help. Despite their pleas and even an offer of substantial payment, Samson, haunted by his past mistakes, refuses to get involved. Later that evening, as Samson is closing his shop, He's surprised to find his son Selwyn waiting for him. Samson learns that it was Selwyn who advised Becky's parents to seek out Samson. Selwyn pleads with his father to help the couple find their missing 14-year-old daughter, explaining that the police are limited in their actions because the criminal syndicate responsible for the kidnapping is protected by powerful individuals. 
Still burdened by guilt and trauma from past events, Samson refuses to get involved, even as Selwyn earnestly tries to convince him. Meanwhile, Faden continues his search alone, going from street to street near the nightclub, asking anyone he encounters if they've seen Becky. In desperation, he enters a bar and shows her photo to the patrons, hoping for any information. Instead of helping, some men in the bar taunt Faden, mocking him for being a bad father who couldn't protect his daughter. Angered by their cruel words, Faden lashes out, starting a fight, but he's quickly overpowered by the men and beaten badly. Just as the situation seems dire, a mysterious figure in a black mask appears and swiftly takes down Faden's attackers, rescuing him from the fight. To Faden's surprise, the man behind the mask is none other than Samson, who had been secretly following him. Samson takes Faden back to his butcher shop to tend to his injuries, and there, he finally agrees to help Faden find Becky. But with one condition, Samson will work alone, without interference from anyone. Desperate to find his daughter, Faden agrees to Samson's terms. The following night, Samson put his plan into action. Disguised as a courier, he arrived at the estate of a businessman named Lucas. Samson tricked the gate guard into letting him approach and quickly incapacitated him. Using a decoy car on autopilot, he created a distraction that drew the remaining guards away from their posts. With precise and stealthy movements, Samson slipped into the building undetected, making his way to the security control room and then into Lucas's private office. Inside Lucas's office, Samson didn't waste any time. He captured Lucas, demanding to know where Becky was. Although Lucas claimed ignorance, Samson wasn't convinced. He warned Lucas to uncover Becky's whereabouts or face severe consequences, making it clear that if he found out Lucas was behind the kidnapping, he would come back to end him. Samson's instincts were correct. Lucas was indeed the mastermind behind Becky's abduction. After Samson left, Lucas ordered his henchman, Flat A, to get rid of Becky. Flat sent Amelia and her partner to eliminate witnesses and then menacingly threatened Becky, dousing her in gasoline to intimidate her into silence. The next day, police discovered a burned body they believed to be Becky's. A bracelet on the body's left wrist matched one Becky wore. However, when Samson saw the condition of the body, he wasn't convinced it was her. He asked the police to perform a DNA test to confirm the identity. Later, Samson, Faden, and Monica waited anxiously at the hospital for the test results. When the forensic doctor confirmed the body was indeed Becky's, Monica broke down in tears, overcome with grief and anger. She blamed Samson for the tragedy, believing his reckless actions had contributed to their loss, and struck him in sorrow and frustration. The next morning, Faden and Monica prepared to return to America, devastated by Becky's death. Meanwhile, Samson, overwhelmed with guilt, drank heavily to numb his pain. In this vulnerable state, Lucas and his men ambushed him at his butcher shop, seeking revenge. Although Samson struggled to defend himself in his intoxicated state, he summoned his remaining strength and fought back fiercely. Despite enduring lashes from iron chains, he managed to overpower his attackers. Amid the chaos of the shootout, Samson had a sudden realization. Becky had always worn her bracelet on her right wrist, not her left. This detail suggested that the body the police found might not be hers. Acting on this suspicion, Samson rushed to the airport to intercept Faden and Monica before they left. He caught them just in time, urgently explaining that Becky might still be alive. He pointed out the discrepancy in the bracelet's position and suggested that the forensic doctor could have been bribed to provide false DNA results. Together, Samson, Faden, and Monica returned to the hospital to confront the forensic doctor. Cornered, the doctor finally revealed the truth, unraveling the mystery surrounding Becky's fate. Under pressure, the doctor confessed that he had been bribed to falsify the DNA results by a man named Stello the Deputy Defense Minister of Moldova. Stella was heavily involved in human trafficking and had a disturbing history of kidnapping American girls to fulfill his twisted desires. Realizing his secret was exposed, Stella quickly learned from the doctor that Faden, Monica, and Samson were closing in on him. Without hesitation, he ordered his henchman flat to deal with Becky's parents and eliminate any threat to his operation. Samson took Faden and Monica to a safe house, a hidden location he had prepared earlier to protect them from Stello's men. Once there, he began organizing the weapons he had stored, 
anticipating that a confrontation was imminent. Meanwhile, Becky, held captive in a remote location far from the city, seized a moment when her guards were distracted to grab her cell phone and call her father. Faden and Monica managed to trace her call, pinpointing her location through the phone signal. What they didn't realize, however, was that this was part of the kidnapper's plan, a trap to lure them in. Faden and Monica contacted Samson, urging him to join them on their way to Kaya Prison, where they believed Becky was being held. Samson, suspicious that this might be a setup, tried to dissuade them, but they were determined to rescue their daughter. Upon reaching the prison, they searched for a way to sneak in, aware that the place was heavily guarded by armed men. After quietly neutralizing the gatekeeper, they slipped inside, moving with caution. As they made their way through the compound, Faden and Monica spotted a guard seemingly leading a young girl away. Believing it was Becky, they followed, only to find it was another ploy designed to expose them. Just as it seemed they were about to be captured, Samson appeared, arriving in the nick of time to save them. He swiftly took down the guards, and with a key taken from one of them, they entered the main building, hoping to find Becky. Inside, they saw a girl who bore a resemblance to Becky. Rushing over, they quickly realized it wasn't her, but another young captive abducted by the criminal syndicate. Without hesitation, they freed the girl and continued their search for Becky. Soon they encountered a group of heavily armed guards. Acting quickly, Samson tossed a smoke grenade to obscure the guards' vision and, in the ensuing confusion, took them down with precise shots. Watching the scene on a surveillance monitor, Flat, the henchman in charge, ordered more guards to block their path. A fierce shootout ensued between Flat's forces and Samson's group, with Samson's side ultimately gaining the upper hand. Seeing his men fall one by one, Flat decided to change tactics. He ordered a retreat and then reached out to Faden, proposing a trade. Becky in exchange for the girl they had just rescued. His voice was cold and threatening, warning that if Faden didn't agree to the exchange, Becky would be killed. Desperate to save his daughter, Faden was left with no choice but to accept the deal. Anticipating another trap, Samson devised a plan to monitor the exchange from a distance, using it as an opportunity to locate Flat's hidden sniper and any other mercenaries lying in wait. As the exchange unfolded, Flat gave the order to eliminate Becky's parents, but Samson was one step ahead. Having already neutralized two of Flat's snipers, he disrupted their coordinated attack, protecting Faden and Monica. Just then, police units arrived, surrounding the area to block any possible escape routes. Meanwhile, the girl swapped in place of Becky displayed remarkable courage. Secretly armed by Samson with a concealed gun, she took a daring shot, hitting Flat directly in the head and ending his threat for good. With Flat eliminated, the police swiftly moved in, rescuing Becky and the other American girls held captive by the syndicate. The next day, Samson and his son Selwyn drove Faden, Monica, and Becky to the Moldova International Airport, ensuring their safe departure back to the United States. Although exhausted and shaken, the family expressed deep gratitude to Samson for his bravery and sacrifice. The film concludes with a powerful final scene. Stello, the mastermind of the trafficking ring, kneels in a church, appearing to pray in repentance for his crimes. As he begins a confession, seeking forgiveness, Samson emerges from the shadows. Without hesitation, he raises his gun and shoots Stello, ending his life with a single shot. Samson's final words echo through the silent church. God might forgive you, but I cannot. If you want interesting movie recaps, like, share, and subscribe to follow us for more movie recaps.